excuse me, the, the other part that I was kind of curious about, because you, you have that longer understanding, because this is not something that Southerners all of a sudden pick up in the late 1850s. This is, as you kind of point out, something that starts as early as the 1820s to develop. And in my own work, I came across this speech that Lao Kossuth gave in April of 1852 in Mobile, where he was talking about like how, how wonderful this welcome was of the people, how they were so warm-hearted in Mobile, Alabama. And then remembered in his speech, the senator of Alabama, um, Senator Clemens, how he was like this obnoxious fellow who didn't want him in the country. And I was thinking as I was reading through your books that this sort of seems to speak to what you're talking about, these different types of national internationalisms that you're seeing in the South. Yeah, it's a great speech. And, you know, there's a reason the Southerners I'm looking at are using this international language. They, like you said, they don't just kind of, you know, decide to pull it out of nowhere overnight. Again, they see themselves as part of this larger international conversation that uses this language. And that's really what they're trying to do is co-opt this language of liberal nationalism to try and justify what they're doing. And so in the book, one of the, like, like you said, I argue that the roots of these secessionist and unionist perspectives go all the way back into the antebellum period as Southerners used international comparisons to create the sense that the South can be compared to national units and to create the sense that the South differs from the North on issues of nationalism. And that's where Kosuth enters my work. So Kosuth, this leading Hungarian nationalist, shows up in the United States after being exiled. He's on the speaking tour, fundraising tour. Like you say, he goes down South, he makes a stop at Mobile, he makes this speech. And in this speech, he recognizes that Alabama isn't necessarily that happy to see him, at least Senator Clemens isn't. And it's this fascinating moment where Kosuth is picking up on the same things I was finding in the sources and my research, which is that the South was not as warmly welcoming of Kosuth as the North was. So I argue that the South develops this idea that they respond to Kosuth differently than the North. And they do so because they have different national values than the North. And this is a key turning point where white Southerners decide we have a different vision of nationhood than the North. And here it's premised on Kosuth and his pleas for aid and assistance. He's asking for help from individuals, but he's also asking for help from the government. And this is where Southerners at least the opinion makers on the newspapers and the magazines just will not abide these requests for official assistance. They see it as unrepublican, going back to Washington's farewell address on his advice to stay out of foreign affairs. They see it as unrepublican. They also see it as a threat to slavery because if they can intervene in Hungary, what's to stop say Great Britain from intervening in the United States and intervening in the slavery of the South and the United States. And so the South is rejecting Kosuth over what they see as his um, rejection of their key value, this republicanism, and Kosuth is aware of it in his Mobile speech. And he's, interestingly enough, using the same language that the Confederates I study are using. He's drawing these international comparisons. He talks about Ireland. He talks about how Southerners love self-government, so they should love Hungary. They hate tyranny, so they should support Hungary. So I think Kosuth's speech shows that, again, there's a reason Southerners are using this kind of international comparison. That's the language of nationalism in the Atlantic world in the middle of the 19th century. And it shows that Kosuth at least understands he's caught between the rock and a hard place on this when he's trying to thread that needle and ultimately he doesn't succeed, but the Southerners who are watching him walk away from this event feeling like they've succeeded and defining the South as different than the North. 